Hello, and welcome to POMA Does, a podcast produced by the Pennsylvania Osteopathic Medical Association. We provide a voice for osteopathic medicine and share insights on issues important to osteopathic physicians, residents, and students, as well as those who embrace the osteopathic philosophy. POMA's mission is to promote the distinctive philosophy and practice of osteopathic medicine for our patients, our members, and the communities we serve. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca Wolf, and I am a graduate of Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine in Erie, Pennsylvania. I just graduated this past year, and I am a current first-year resident in internal medicine. Joined today by my colleagues, Stephanie Koblitz and Lawson Parker. Stephanie and Lawson, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Yeah, thanks, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie Koblitz. I graduated from VCOM, Louisiana and Monroe, Louisiana just in 2020. 24 with Rebecca and Lawson, and I am a PGY1 in internal medicine in Mississippi. And hey, everyone, I'm Lawson Parker. I just graduated from Rocky Vista in Southern Utah. I am a first year resident in ophthalmology at Corwell Health in Detroit, Michigan. Thank you so much for joining me today, Steph and Lawson. So what we're going to be talking about is, as you know, the new first year class of medical students is about to be starting in the next couple of weeks here. So I thought it'd be fun if we could talk about some advice that we have for the incoming medical students. What is something that you look back on your time in medical school and you thought was really helpful or something really cool that you did in your time? Yeah, I wouldn't say that probably my biggest piece of advice was something that I heard early on, like probably even as a pre-med before I got into med school. And that was that a competition happens at the bottom and collaboration happens at the top. So I think it's really important, especially when you're starting a journey like medical school, to find a community and have a group of people, colleagues that, you know, you work well with, or, you know, even if you have different perspectives or different goals and outlooks to find a group of people that you can work with and you can grow from one another. Uh, And I think that one way to do that is just to get involved in leadership that could be at your campus level uh, and then as your first year and then build your way up to working at a national level. I was really fortunate to do a lot with SOMA. I started my chapter locally and then kind of climbed up the ladder and ended up doing national work on the board of trustees with, with you guys. And that was such a great opportunity and experience because I met people from all over the country and we were all obviously very different, but we all had similar experiences as med students. And that's kind of something that it's it's really difficult to relate to if you've never been to med school uh, or if you've never been the spouse of someone in med school. It's hard to see what it's like behind the scenes. So definitely getting involved in a community, one from, you know, of course, the professional development and the networking, but also just having that community of people that support one another. That would probably be my biggest advice is find that community and stick with it. One thing that was really cool for me this past year as I was at a conference in DC, DOD on Capitol Hill. And this was just after the match. So I already knew where I was going to residency. And I actually met my current chief resident in DC, who I'd never actually met before. And, you know, he kind of reached out and saw that I was there. And so I got to meet someone in my program before I'd even started. And, and that really made me feel a lot more comfortable going into the transition to residency. So I'd really just say, find your community and stick with it. And you'll all grow together. And then it's really cool to have all these friends when you're in residency and, you know, Rebecca's in Ohio, Lawson's in Detroit. Like, it's nice to have these people all over that, you know, you can count on even years later. That's so true. Like, I met you guys when we were... Wow. It was end of our first year, beginning of our second year when we all met of medical school. And it's crazy to think we've known each other for four years and really seen each other through the medical school journey. But I think what you said about, you know, competitions at the bottom and collaborations at the top, we were together through all of our board exams, both sets of our complex exams match ranking, moving, graduation. So finding our group was really important. Lawson, how did you find a community, especially in Utah, an osteopathic community, kind of growing out there, right? Yeah, it's definitely growing. It isn't like a full network, I would say, in Utah. And there's a lot of work to be done. And I feel like for a lot of students, 
they had the same experience that I did where you kind of start medical school and you immediately feel very overwhelmed. There's a lot going on. You're learning at an insane pace. You're trying to set yourself up for success in the future, which is like four years out and it feels like it's forever away. But like Stephanie and Rebecca said, the importance of community is huge. I think the biggest part about like the medical school journey is taking that first step and getting involved, especially in something that you're passionate about. I went into medical school interested in ophthalmology. And so I was able to find a community with other students who are interested in ophthalmology. I also had a passion for leadership and was able to get involved with my school's chapter of SOMA pretty early on and was able to use that to gain skills and experiences that were just unique to my personal journey, right? And ended up being part of the national leadership for two years. So I feel like I hear a lot of students when they start school, it's like, I'm trying to keep my mind open. I don't know what I want to do, but I don't feel like that's a reason to slow your pace. It's not a reason to stop participating and growing in the many other ways that you can in medical school school. I had no idea that I'd be so involved in SOMA and leadership. And now, you know, I am a resident and I have a lot more responsibility than I did as a medical student. But the decisions and the things that I did as a leader really apply to being a great physician and making decisions for your patients, making decisions for your team, taking responsibility for decisions that maybe weren't the best at the time. And so I'm really glad that I was able to find that community by really just getting involved early on. I think that's really well said. We actually all know each other through SOMA. I don't know if I said that at the beginning. And I actually got involved with POMA through my white coat ceremony. POMA comes on our on-campus days at LECOM and donates the white coats and the stethoscopes through POMA and the POMA Foundation. And that's how I got involved in advocacy and leadership. They were the ones that actually lifted me up really to help me get more involved within SOMA. They were the ones that encouraged me to run for the region trustee position in SOMA and then later on the presidency. And it's kind of a network of physicians that are young physicians that have been in practice all over the state of Pennsylvania, and they're there to help and support you through your journey. So they're osteopathic physicians. They know their way around the board exams, the licensing exams, applying through residency and can offer that mentorship. And and I think every field of osteopathic medicine and really give good advice and service physician mentors, which is really important. But something that we've been talking about as well as SOMA, I think we need to recognize that a lot of new incoming osteopathic medical students might be listening to this and might not know what SOMA or the AOA or a state society is. So do one of you guys want to talk about what is SOMA and then the other one can talk about getting involved with the AOA and what the AOA is? Yeah, I can talk a little bit about SOMA. So SOMA is the Student Osteopathic Medical Association. It's the largest group of osteopathic medical students in the country. It's a group that advocates on behalf of every osteopathic medical student in the country. It's also a, a group that provides value to its members in the form of many workshops and experiences, lectures, events, conferences. There's so much that SOMA does for its members. It's membership led. The leadership is elected or appointed directly by students. And it really goes hand in hand with bettering the situation for medical students. You know, what SOMA does is it takes issues that the students are currently having and it advocates to many different organizations on behalf of those students. And that way we can have a unified voice within organized medicine or within these different groups of physicians where we need to share what we are thinking. You know, the student voice is very important. We're the future physicians. We are going through different experiences than physicians did 20 years ago when they were in medical school. And those are things that we need to bring to the forefront of discussion. So being a member of SOMA is super important. It really opens you up to a ton of different opportunities, including networking with physicians, residents, other osteopathic medical students, as well as like getting opportunities for scholarships. As a SOMA member, I was able to receive two scholarships that help pay for me to go to conferences and other things. So I'd highly recommend getting involved. You know, you pay once and you're in SOMA for the full four years of medical school. So honestly, it's a really good bang for your buck, I guess. And you forgot the part about where you get really awesome friends and colleagues that stick with you forever, like the three of us have. Yes, lifelong friends for sure. Thank you. And Steph, do you want to talk about 
about what the AOA is? Yeah, absolutely. So the AOA is the American Osteopathic Association. And this is the representative body for all of osteopathic physicians as well as osteopathic medical students. So what's really cool about the AOA is membership is actually free for osteopathic medical students. You just have to go online and quote activate your membership, sign up for it, but it is included. So it's a really great opportunity. The AOA does all sorts of things. There's lots of different committees and organizations. They advocate on behalf of the profession. They have a health of delegates once a year, which is a really great time to see advocacy and action and what it's like. Very similar to the House of Representatives for the United States. So it's very kind of cool to see advocacy play out live in action and see everyone come from all across the country and all of the different states and work together towards common goal points. They also have lots of different opportunities for students to sit on various committees and bureaus and work on different things that, you know, whether it be things that are open, like forward facing to the public, different journals or advertising things or increasing knowledge of osteopathic per profession and what we do as osteopathic physicians, as well as things within medical education and working at the comms levels. And of course, tons of mentorship, research, publications, things like that. There's if you are interested in anything related to medical education, obviously, medicine in general, mentorship, advocacy, there is something in the AOA for everyone. And it's a really great organization that does a really great job of blending the osteopathic medical student as their first joining, as well as having committees and different groups for the different stages of practice for osteopathic physicians. So there are physicians obviously in residency and then new physicians in practice. And then you have older ones who have maybe started their own practices or work for different hospital systems. So it's a really great way, one, to just meet everyone. The osteopathic community is very strong, tight-knit family. There's many people that I've met Uh, at one conference as a first year that, you know, I still talk. And that's not just like in my own peer cohort, but also physicians in practice that have said, you know, one day if you're ever in this area and you're looking for a job, you know, we'd love to have you. We'd love to work together. That's in it for the long haul. It's not always about, you know, something just for med school, but for your career and the longevity of your life. And everyone really is a, a close family. We've seen people's kids grow up. People have new kids or new marriages and families and all of this. Everyone is really close. So it's a great way to get involved and see the different sides of the profession, especially if you maybe don't know what you want to do, you can see different people and kind of find a mentor who you mesh well with or whose career type that you might be interested, whether it be more of the academic route uh, as far as maybe resident education or maybe more undergraduate medical education or you don't want the academic route and you want to be more clinical. So there's a little avenue for everyone there. And I think that the AOA does a great job of providing opportunities in each of those areas. So definitely, I would say the starting place would be to sign up for your membership online it's free. Start getting the emails. You'll see opportunities arise in the emails as well as just read like the DO has some really cool articles uh, from med students as well as uh, physicians in practice too. So it's really cool to see the different spectrum of the career. I think you recapped it really well. And you mentioned families and things like that. And one of the best parts for me, Stephanie, you actually have a little girl. So we got to see her be born and then her grow up at her like last couple conferences. She turned from a newborn to a little girl, which was super fun to watch. So AOA membership is free. All you have to do is log on online and activate it. And HOMA membership is free. All you have to do is log online and activate it. I want to ask you guys one last question, and it's an easy one. What is your highlight from medical school, the best memory looking back on the past four years? What is something you enjoyed the most? Oh, man, that's a good one. What's crazy is I feel like a lot of them are really focused on SOMA and what we were able to do there. One big moment for me was during my second year of medical school, me and a couple of friends authored a resolution for SOMA and were able to watch it get passed in the SOMA House of Delegates. And that was a really cool moment because it was such a learning process. It wasn't something that we knew anything about as far as writing the resolution, but it was a topic that we were passionate about. And it was something we wanted to help change and make a difference in. You know, we wrote a resolution initially, went to one House of Delegates and had it be sent back to authors so that we could rework it a little bit. 
And then we ended up sending it back in and going to a second House of Delegates where it was passed unanimously. And so that was just like one of those moments where you can see like a passion project come to fruition, which was like one of the top moments I had during medical school. I think for me, what I would say is my top moment was probably, you know, a culmination of everything that had happened over the last four years. And that would be when we had our last day of our last SOMA conference as medical students. And I had just passed on my gavel as vice president speaker to the new vice president speaker who I knew would do a phenomenal job. And everybody was grabbing their suitcases and heading back to, you know, wherever states they're from all over the country. I got back to my hotel room, you know, how saying goes and they're like, okay, now feel. And all at once it hit me of what the last four years have been and how close I was to everyone. We didn't become colleagues. I mean, we were colleagues, we were peers, but I didn't realize, you know, along the way until we had come to this big turning point in our careers. I didn't realize that who I was calling my colleagues and my friends were actually my family. And the number of hours that we put in together, I spent more time with you guys than anyone else in my family or any of my you know, friends from before med school and from different aspects of life. And just having a moment where you could feel something so deeply and to know that we were all getting on planes, the three of us were going to three different time zones, and I had no doubt that we would still be best friends in 20 years, 30 years, that our careers would absolutely cross again. And here we are just a few months later, and we're already crossing paths again and doing something together. But you know, just having that moment where I was like, wow, this is probably the most palpable emotion or feeling of creating a community for myself and doing something bigger than myself that, that I've experienced in my life. So it was just really a moment of recognizing all of the highs and lows and the triumphs of the last four years and where it had brought me in my career and where I think it will bring me in my future career and the career trajectory that I'm going to have from this. I think it's really cool that you both said like different conventions for your highlights. So Lawson was talking about like AOA house and Soma houses. You were talking about our last DO day and our last Soma house. I was torn between OMED last year when we got to go to Disney World because the three of us are all big Disney fans. Me and Lawson were on Toy Story Midway Mania. So that was like a really high, happy memory. And then also our last Soma house together when we all took our pictures outside in the lobby. And I like looked around and saw all of the people that I've like been doing the last four years with. And we got to see all of our other osteopathic mentors at DO Day the couple days before that who were congratulating us on our matches and helping us with our new moves and introducing us to people that would be meeting in our new states. I thought that was really cool. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Like I said, it's been a fun four years and I'm excited to like be doing these for the next 40 years. You guys are a great community. And I hope everyone else listening to this also joins, you know, POMA, SOMA, the AOA and finds their community as well. Thank you for joining us for this edition of POMA Does. Be sure to subscribe to POMA Does wherever you listen to your podcasts and tell your friends and colleagues to tune in. Learn more about osteopathic medicine and POMA on our webpage, www.poma.org and join the conversation on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Or email us at palma at palma.org. We'd love to hear from you. Join us next time for another edition of Palma Dutch.